Mark chapter 3. And he entered again into the synagogue. That's where the Jews met. And there was a man there which had a withered hand. Now we'll go back in chapter 2. He walked in the synagogue and healed. But things have changed. And they watched him. Whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day. That they might accuse him. Look where we're going. We're three chapters in the book of Mark. And they already hate this guy. He's got all the crowds. People are coming to him. So he walks into church, you want to say it, as he's supposed to, as the law prescribes, it's a Sabbath day to go hear the, the, the law. And are they in church to hear the word? No, they're in church to see what he's going to do. Man, that hasn't changed over the years. There are people go to church and say, oh, you know, what's that person we're doing? What's he going to do? And, of course, this is the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes are checking him out. And for the sole purpose to accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, stand for him. Now, this is kind of interesting because who came to who first? And I mean, there's got to be a lot of sick people in this church. And, but here's one man, he's got a hand, it's withered, dead. And he said unto them, The ones watching him. <clears throat> Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? Now, he just had a Sabbath day battle out, chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. I just explained to you guys the Sabbath day. Evidently, verse 2, of chapter 3, you haven't learned your lesson. You didn't listen to the message. So, why are you in church? Oh, you're in church to catch me doing something on the Sabbath day. Which I just explained to you. The Sabbath was made for man. So. To save a life or to kill. And what he's saying. Listen. If it's the Sabbath day. Someone is, is about to die. And you can help them. Are you going to say. No we can't do it. Because it's the Sabbath day. Well you were circumcising babies. When the eighth day came on the Sabbath. You had to do the sacrifices every morning and every night on the, on the Sabbath. You got to trim the candles on the Sabbath. Well, here's a guy who's got a withered hand. But they held their peace. Jesus was correct. They couldn't say nothing. That argument he had with them, chapter 2, verses 23 to 28, he corrected them. And now they can't say nothing. And when he had looked around about them with about on them with anger, check out Matthew 5 28 to Matthew 5 22 in the perverted Bibles to find out that Jesus now sinned and is going to hell. Remember that verse that said who shows anger with his brother and without a cause is not mentioned? Said he'll be in danger of hellfire. Okay, so that Bible that quotes that misquotes and takes out without without a cause. Jesus, it says, he had looked around about them with anger. Now, because of that Bible verse, he's going to hell. How's that sound? So it shows when he looked at it with anger, the Bible says, Be ye angry, sin not. You can have anger. It's not a sin. Now, what you do with your anger will result in sin. He's looking at it because, you know what? I just had this big lesson with you guys. And here you are in church. I'm calling it church, tabernacle, Sabbath, synagogue, whatever you want to call it. You're only here to see what I'm going to do. And you're ready to put me into, into judgment, into prison. That's why you're here. But they held their, uh, no, I meant, he looked at with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. See, they're not going to change. It's a heart condition. He saith unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. Wait a minute. Hold on, Jesus. You haven't got the picture here. His hand is withered. How can he stretch it forth? 
It's remarkable that God asks us to do things we can't. To prove in us that God can work in us. Now if God could tell, I'm saying Jesus is God. If God would tell this man to do something he could, he could go ahead and look what I did. Well, your hand is healed, but you sure maybe he didn't do anything or you didn't do anything or made it. No, God asked this man to do something impossible. So when he goes tells others, there's no other ways that could show that was other than God that works. Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it out without no doubt, without, there's faith. Okay, stretch it out. I can't, but stretch it out. And his hand was restored whole as the other. It was withered. Now he's got the use of two hands again. Now isn't that a joy? What do you think made this guy's family and friends were there? So, hey, check it out. Wow, great. And the Pharisees went forth, straightway took counsel with the Herodians, that's the Roman group, against him. How they might destroy him and Pilate tells us it's because of envy people liked him more than they liked them and they can't even enjoy when someone in their congregation as soon as this guy went to the synagogue he's there who knows from life he's probably been in this synagogue I'm assuming all right take this assumption for a moment here the Pharisees have been in this synagogue. Here this guy's been in this synagogue. How long he's had this condition, I don't know. But the religious leaders of this synagogue, when he finally gets healed, should be just praising them. No, they're mad. That's a cold heart. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. <clears throat> And a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. That's what they hated. Wait a minute. So these guys are left all by themselves. Where's our church? It's at the seaside now. I think that's what a lot of pastors are afraid of today. This good preacher will come in and he'll take the people. And they'll start throwing stuff at the people, you know, you know, forsake not the assembly here, and, you know, invite and all that. Maybe you're just getting bad, you know you are, and somebody came who loved the Lord and wanted to do right, maybe you fear them. I've been in that case. If these people are not even happy one person getting healed, I'd go follow the one that's doing it too. You want to have that kind of mood about us and our family and, uh, and the people in this congregation? This guy has compassion. Evidently, you don't. Let's go. And from Jerusalem, and from Intermedia, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, and great multitude. Man, he's got, he doesn't have towns and cities. He has counties. And I'm trying to reference the state of America. He's got counties. He's got states of people coming to him. Tyre and Siren, they're along the Mediterranean Sea goes Jordan, that's the river. He's up by the Sea of Galilee. They're coming from Jerusalem. That's a long haul. For what? For one preacher. And great multitude, when they had heard what great things he, had, uh, he did, came unto him. He spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him, crowd him, overpower him. Another place to make him king after he feeds him, John sick. Well, they want to make up. They would make him king. Hey, you're healing us. You're giving us food. But well, that would be the wrong king type. That would be the America welfare system president. If you had a president that said, "We'll give you all your food. You don't have to work. We'll give you out. We'll give you everything you want." I guarantee, I know where all the voting will go. Now, if you want God to take care of you, you want God to lead you. It's not just the healing. It's not just the food. You got to do what I tell you to do. And you know what the reaction is? That one minute Hosanna to the glory in the highest, next minute crucify him.
for he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plague. So, you just had to go up to Jesus and lay your hand on him. How's that? Walk up to a healing service and don't have the guy lay hands on you. You go up and touch his hem of his, his pants or something and see if you get healed. It's not going to happen. The same thing happened to a woman who had the blood of 12 years. She said, oh, I could just touch the hem of his coat. He doesn't even have to look at me. He doesn't even have to talk to me. He doesn't even have to have anything to do. If I could just come to him, I'm here. That's what they're doing. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God, James 2, 19. Now, wouldn't that be a great testimony as it is? Here are devils out of hell, devil possession, uh, exorcists, whatever you want to call it. Here they're down, falling down before this man saying, you are the son of God. That's a testimony. That's a sign to the Jews. The Jews require a sign. The devils of hell are proclaiming who this man is. And where does this man end up? Dying on a cross. The nation's sick. The nation is in rebellion. <clears throat> and he goeth on up into a mountain. And he had to be number twelve. And straightway charged them that they should not make him known. Why? They don't they don't believe. They're not gonna listen. They just want the works. Jesus knows where he's going. He's he's on his way to to Jerusalem to Calvary to the empty tomb. That's where he's going. He knows what they're going to do. He knows their attitude. And he goes up into a mountain. You ever see the little tiny American Jesus? I would think that Jesus is muscular and all these prophets and, and, and the men in the Bible. Because they're going up and down. You know how many times Moses went up and down that mountain of Sinai? At 80 years old? Man, he's going up and down. The Bible says he goes to the mountains to pray. I don't think he's this little pruny little popsicle stick. I think I think you'll find Jesus is very muscular, like Samson. And called unto him who he would. All right, he's going to call whom he would. And they came unto him. So he's going to choose his own. No one's going to be chosen for him. <clears throat> and he ordained 12 that they should be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. Does that say get the toy blocks out? Does that say get the magic tricks out? It says preach. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know how you get people saved? You preach to them. You don't pull out all the knick-knack patty wax. It ain't working. Jesus has been healing these people. He's taking care of these people. He's feeding these people. And they still say crucify him. Does have power to heal sickness? Sicknesses. 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 You can carry that word on. And to cast out devils. Why is he telling them to do this? This is the disciples. Because Jews require a sign. How are you going to prove who these men are? By the signs they wrought. Moses had signs. Aaron had signs. The prophets had signs. Their prophecy, when it came to be, was a sign. That guy was a prophet. And Simon, he surnamed Peter. And James, the son of Zebedee. And John, the brother of James. And he surnamed them Boanjeus. Boanjeus. Broken jurors, which is sons of thunder. That's that's kind of interesting. Later on in the book of John, Lord, shall we call down fire like Elijah? Or maybe they just had a big voice. I don't know. Thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Tadius, 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 and Simon the Canaanite. 
Ooh, take that back to Exodus 34 11. And Judas Iscariot, P.S., which also betrayed him. And they went into an house. So here are the 12. If you check out Matthew and Luke, some of the names are not the same. But they're the same person with a, a different name. That's Thaddeus. I believe he has three different names in his Bible. And you say, well, 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 come on, three different. Yeah, but don't you have a first, middle, and last name in America? And notice he doesn't mention Mark himself. Yet Mark is a disciple. He's a follower. Book of Acts. And the multitude cometh together again. Here they are again. So that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, he is beside himself. He's joined himself to a cult. Jesus is freaking out. When his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, he is beside. Now his friends are starting to say, you know what? This guy is getting a little loony doony. It's kind of that that is be marked because I kind of know there's 12 names that Oh, Sadie is he's he's got the three names, but it's never in in Acts he's called John Mark. I just can't all the names yeah. Mark wasn't really he's a disciple in Matthew we also read or it Luke coming up. He said he called seventy others too and sent them out two by two. Mark is just not in the in group, but here he is right in the gospel. Luke wasn't a disciple. He was a he was with the disciples, and he was a companion Paul. And yet that'll be his that'll be our next gospel, Luke, Lord willing. So even Jesus' friends are now thinking mm, a little trouble here. And when we get by, we finish John's gospel. We'll see even his brothers and sisters. You know what? Get out of here. We're just sick of you. We're sick of your message. Go somewhere else. He's not wanted. He's like Jeremiah. He's not wanted. <clears throat> and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, now here comes the scribes time again. He has Bill Elzebub. <clears throat> Excuse me, Matthew 12 we did this. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him and said, unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan if a kingdom be divided against itself the kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself the house cannot stand and if satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but has an end which he will have an end so now his friends are saying, you know, this guy is a part of an occult. And the next step we get into, now the scribes are saying Jesus Christ is Satan. And we're only in three chapters of 12, I think there is. And they're calling him Satan. They're saying the works that you do, Satan is God. And this is where he said we're going to get to that, you know, that unpartable sin. We're going to get to that again. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man. That's the devil. And then he will spoil his house. Satan's going to be bound up for a thousand years with a chain. And then now the rebuke. And before the rebuke, he says, listen, if Satan's doing his work, He's not going to last. He's casting out his own devils, what you're saying. So it's impossible. Verily I say unto you, and except you bind the strong man, he just told you what's going to happen after the tribulation period, just before the great white throne judgment. I'm going to bound that guy for a thousand years for the millennium. I'll get victory over him. He won't lose because... He's going against his own devils. 
Verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. Amen. And blasphemies wherein soever they shall bless. Amen. <clears throat> but he. Now here we go with the danger. People run into the Bible. He that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal fire, damnation, excuse me, colon, colon. Here comes another sentence that is in reference to the sentence we just read. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. The unpardonable sin is when you told Jesus, now get this, the work that the Holy Ghost did in you is of Satan. You're never going to get saved. You're going to die and be damned and go into the lake of fire. That is the unpardonable sin. And that can't be done today. You cast out devils by the prince Beelzebub. No, it's not Beelzebub. It's the Holy Ghost that's doing it. And by saying the Holy Ghost is Beelzebub, you're damned for life. These scribes can never get saved by what Je Jesus has said. Hath never forgiveness. I can't, no one can do that today. No one can walk up and say to Jesus, the works that you're doing, because he's not doing no works right now, except for saving people. And you got, let me be very careful with this now. Let me throw something on the wood pile that you can burn. If you say that the Holy Ghost drawing people to men is Satan, I'm going to stop right there, because I don't know any further. But these men had done the unpardonable sin by saying the works of Jesus is not God, not the Holy Spirit, but of Satan. That's the unpardonable sin. Then came them his brethren and his mother. And standing without, they're not with Jesus, they're outside the group. Sent unto him, calling him. So see, they, they got, hey, you tell Jesus come over here please. The multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. So they go ahead and say, Jesus, you know, tell Jesus, his brethren over there, you want to tell Jesus our brother? You know, they're you know, when you get to Jesus, tell him his brethren out over there, way over there. You know, we got all these people around us. His mother and his brethren want to see him. You know, it's like when you're in church, somebody comes up to you, taps you on the shoulder, and say, you know, somebody in the foyer wants you, or... They want you in the nursery for your child. That's, that's what's going on here. And he answered him saying, Who is my mother? And who is my brother? Look at that. Well, Jesus. He, he tells the people, Who are my mother and my brother? Oh, well, I think somebody said, Well, Mary over there. And your brother James and... And he looked round about on them, the multitude that sat about him. He's looking at the multitude and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. Implying if they were really my mother and my brethren, they'd be sitting amongst you, wouldn't they be? Because watch what he says. Whosoever shall do the will of God... The same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Ooh, that's a sharp stick. Because we know his brethren don't follow him until after he's dead and buried and rose from the grave. That's a little charge against Mary, his mother there, isn't it? Like, when has she been there with him? I don't know. But he looks at the multitude and says, listen, you're my mother, you're my sister, you're my brother, because you're sitting here listening to what God has to tell you to do. That's the will. So, 